Thank you for joining us. When celebrating life and special events from business to weddings, a very important part is the catering. Our guest today is Chef Shaike Korlansky. He's originally from Israel and now in South Florida and is very well known for his excellent quality cuisine and unique styles that are actually taking the kosher catering world by storm. Shaike is regarded as one of the area's most exciting, elegant and creative culinary chefs. And regardless of how extravagant the event, he not only makes it happen, but also delivers with finesse and style. We'll hear more from Shaike himself following these messages. Life Extension Foundation was established in 1977 and is now the world's largest consumer-based anti-aging organization. Life-saving achievements taken for granted today were pioneered by Life Extension Foundation decades ago. Life Extension is currently funding $10 million a year in research on significantly extending a healthy human lifespan. Diseases that once plagued humanity have largely been eradicated by scientific innovation. Three leading causes of death in 1900 are no longer leading killers today. Smallpox killed millions before it was eliminated in 1979. Life Extension funds research to fight biological aging so that it also will become a relic of the past. To learn more, log on to lifeextensionfoundation.org. Find magic again. Sprout by HP. With Intel RealSense technology inside, now you can bend the rules of creativity outside. Sitting around in a place uh, where they sell street food in Israel, you can see the people, you can hear the music, you can feel the vibe. It's different than anywhere else in the world. It's not only food, it's more than that. I get the same feeling from my customers. What happened in the last few years is that the chefs in Israel understood the power of street food all over the world. That people are looking for the cheapest, tastiest food that you can just take, grab, don't have to sit in a restaurant and enjoy it. They just took the regular vegetables, meat, vegetarian, and put their soul, their hearts in it, and their names, of course, and people followed. I realized that I can take the highest food that I'm doing and put it in the most common situation in Israel, and that is the pita. So in this way, I combine the high cuisine with the most common and local ingredient that is the pita. When you begin with this, you cannot stop it. No one but you got me feeling this way. There's so much we can't explain. In the Jewish tradition, a tale of herrings is what the poor people have in the Ashkenazic world of Eastern Europe. But now things change and I chose the herring because I'm not ashamed to go and open a place in the street and make herring sandwiches. It's a different sandwich. I treat the herring like sashimi and uh, I'm happy. This stand is a typical fresh juice stand in Tel Aviv. We sell uh, oranges, uh, citrus, uh, pomegranate become very popular. We get clients from all over the world. All of our ingredients, it grows here in Israel. We get it every morning fresh from local farmers. 
and we squeeze it on the spot in front of the customer. So, this is the pita bread, bread. And uh, then after the, the basic uh, you know, ingredients, you have the hummus. This is the hummus uh, of uh, chickpeas. Chickpeas or garbanzo beans. And this is the trina, and trina is uh, made of sesame. Sesame seeds. Sesame seeds, mm -hmm. exactly. It is oily, very, it tastes very healthy too. Hope so. <laughs> because we all uh, are fun with it, exactly. Yes. With us now is Shaike Kowalanski. Shaike, a pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, my pleasure to be here. I'm super excited. Well, you're one of the most famous caterers in South Florida, and Everyone wants you for their event, and I should have asked you to bring a selection of some of your items, appetizers, but anyway, we're here without, and that's just fine. So you came here from Israel about 12, 13 years ago. Tell us about that. What made you come here? When I just come here, I want to travel to America, like every young uh, Israeli uh, boy, they come to they come to an age of 19, 20, he want to travel around the world and see everything. Um, I got here, I was thinking maybe I would stay two, three weeks and go back. And you know, nothing end in two or three weeks. And it's, um, since then I'm here, it's already 14 years that I live here in the state. And I, I just fell in love. When I, when I land down and I look at the bridges and the numbers of cars and numbers of people and how big is New York City, I really fell in love. I'm like, wow, everything here is impossible. If you focus on one thing, you can definitely make it. And you focused on catering, but with a special twist, kosher catering, but uh, very unique. I got a gift when I, um, since I'm very young, that I always can tweak things and see things in a different perspective. And I like to see what people get excited and get emotion and uh, really feeling something when they see something different or something, something they never expected. And you can see it on every show, even on your show, what people really like about it. And they get excited. They want to watch it again. They want to see what's going to happen tomorrow. I like to bring uh, catering or whatever I do in my life to this level to make sure the guests are coming and see something they don't see before and get excited. So I like to take the feeling, the smell, the emotion and bring it to a different level. So let's see one of your promotional videos, which I saw earlier with interesting things like nitrogen gas. Very interesting. So we'll see this right now. Enjoyed it. Shaiki was unbelievable. His staff is spectacular. One of the hardest working staff I've Extremely ever seen. Extremely hardworking, very professional, very efficient. And uh, the 
setup and the presentation were magnificent. Magnificent. Singular. Things that people had never seen before. We are super satisfied. He helped really helped make our Simcha uh, that much greater. It was already a time of great joy for us, and he enhanced it tremendously. The food was delicious. It presented wonderfully, and uh, we will definitely use him again. We're back with Shaike. It's so nice to see innovative ideas, making ice cream and so forth with nitrogen gas. Tell us about it. So I always think what makes people impressed, not just to see food. So what I see, I like to take, to take people and take them back to the kitchen. So I, I cannot take them back to the kitchen. I bring the kitchen to the floor. And then I put all the pieces, what need to be done, and to put the last, uh, the last touch of the food on the floor and make, um, make the feeling like it's happening right now to give it the last crisp, the last touch. So I, I took like a different, um, a different chemistry and a different uh, vision how to really bring something more than just food. So I took, uh, let's say I wanna do something with, um, with ice cream. So I said, what about if we freeze the ice cream on the floor and we're gonna come with a smoke um, scene and a smoke show. And when we did it one time, we saw the kids just jumping all over the smoke and they really get excited and they want another one and another one. So I start to come up with all this idea, even it's um, something like magic that you do with your hands like that and it's a smoke coming out of your hand. So I like when the chef take the plate and touch it and do like, and then you see the smoke coming out. So it's make the guests more connect and more really excited about the food. Interesting. Israel is such a country of innovation technologically and in so many other areas. And now cuisine as well. Very interesting. Yes, it is. It's all coming, you know, when you don't have the tools and you more use your brain when you're young, you start to be more creative and you have more ideas because you're not distracted by, by so many things in your life. So this is what I like to do. I usually like to relax and just focus on new ideas. And if I see something that I have trouble with, I'm thinking, how can we take this and make it unbelievable? And this is what I always like to focus, to see what's the issue. Let's say we go to issue of Friday night dinner when we cannot use oven again after a certain time. So I have to come up with ideas what we can cook longer and get softer and not get dry. So this is how I always think, what should we do and how we do it. And this is how I surprise my clients and my guests when we serve it on the plate, because it's just getting better with time. Shaike, what special events, or what is the variety of events that you provide services to? So we do most of the gala events here in South Florida. Um, we just did Teures um school gala events. They have close to 840 people. We did, um, um, uh, we did Bikur Hall in gala events. They have 340 people and we're gonna do it this year again. They already signed with us. They were so happy with what we did last year and we're gonna do it again this year. They already have more people coming. Uh, we do a lot of gala events in here in South Florida. We do a lot of weddings, bar and bat mitzvah. We do corporation events. We do Christmas events. We did um, the Trump building uh, Christmas party um, a few years ago and it was unbelievable. So we really do a lot of events here in South Florida, um, like big events and small events, very unique. We did for the president of FIU when you have a very unique one-on-one uh, -on -one meeting or you have meetings with 10 or 12 people and you, want, you need a kosher food, so we serve them. So we do uh, very unique events when people looking for um, for a peace of mind and to make sure someone take care of everything from A to Z, they call us, they use, uh, they use our services to, to make sure they can be as a guest and take care of the guest and someone behind gonna take care of everything else. Yes, so we interviewed the president of FIU and others. Uh, what are the favorites that people generally ask for? Most of my clients, they come to me, they want, the, it's funny how they call it, they ask to have a shaky touch in their menu or their events. So usually they ask for something they don't see before. They really ask for a show and they ask to make sure the guests are happy. And you need someone behind to understand 
what really the guests feeling in each step of your wedding. Like think about it, when you have a wedding, uh, usually people skip lunch and I'm not sure how much they have for breakfast. And now when they come at six or seven o'clock, if you give them a little bites of food and then you have a chupa from seven to eight and then you have only a salad from eight to eight terry and then they have the first dance from eight terry to nine fifteen, nine fifteen it's already these people waiting a whole day to have food. So I like to see the vision when they come in, what really, how they gonna feel and what go through the day, how long they drive, how far is the venue from where they live or if it's a day, if it's during the week, after work day, so normally they're not gonna have dinner, they come direct to the event. So all this, it's, um, it's give me the um, feeling how to make a decision, what to serve and which step we're gonna go, where we're gonna put more, where we're gonna put just what they need and how the step gonna be. Again, you don't wanna fill them up and say, oh my gosh, I'm so full, I can't even have dinner. You wanna have the balance of everything. I understand that your company provides catering at different locations, different venues. Do you have any preferences? Um, we go in anywhere the clients want us to go. For me, everything is fun, but more challenge, it's much more fun. Because if it's easy, this is how my other boss used to tell me, if it's easy, everyone can do it. So I really like when you have a challenge and you really did something that not everybody can do. It's something that you did it because you organize everything, you have the right team, you have the right people, and you have the right manager doing the event. So I'm never afraid of something that that's, it's impossible. For me, everything is possible. So I like to go everywhere. We're doing Vizcaya, we're doing uh, some buildings that have, um, they have like a rooftop on 18th floor and we have to go around the building and go everywhere. And for me, when the challenge is there and I know what I'm doing, I set up the team, I really enjoy it. I like to see the result. I like to see the smile of the people when they walking around. My pleasure when I walk around and ask people how you like everything and to hear how uh, thankful the guests are and how happy they are, that's what really make me, make me happy. We are told that your, the service the, your staff, your crew are excellent and people are saying wonderful things about not only the food, the cuisine, but the service. Yeah, we build a system with the years and we, we do training and then we do our meetings before the party. So we have a whole team and managers on each team. It starts from the kitchen and then it's going for the stations on the floor who manage the chefs and then it's going to the bartenders who manage the bartenders. It's going to the wait staff who are going to manage them and then we have on each section we have strong managers and each one got trained and this training that's what build us up and the main thing what I tell my my employees all the time and I think it's the most important thing and each one should take it to their own business be yourself we want you to have a smile we want you to be you know to always ask the guests but be yourself I want, you, I want it to come from you, be who you are, don't be, don't follow the book and be what the book tells you to do. So I think that's what makes my employees more relaxed and more, uh, more happy and people feel that it's, it's a real service and it's not coming, it's not something that, that we push pressure for everyone to do like that and to, to be nervous. I want my employees, if they see someone looking for a napkin, leave everything. That's the most important part to get a napkin for this, pe for this person. It's no rule. Oh, it's not your job. It's your job. Be yourself. You see someone there looking for help, go help him. You need a fork, go get him a fork. That's the most important thing right now. This is interesting and I'd like us to continue, but we have to pause for these commercial messages. We'll be right back. We're back with Shaike Kowalanski. Shaike, I'd like to ask you a little bit about your background. You were born in Israel, you lived in Bnei Barak. How did you get into the catering business? When, when I grew up, I grew up in a yeshiva. So we studied um, the Jewish law in yeshiva. And sometimes we study 16 hours a day and we have a whole uh, summer or a whole winter that we, start, we study nonstop. 
And one day we go on a trip to see in Sfa to see the snow because in Israel it's not so many places you can see snow and not every year you're lucky to see the snow. So I was very excited. I go and of course little you know young kids the just have driver license go drive in the snow without experience. We get to a car accident. So we have to pay the bills. So on that time my brother was involved in the catering uh, industry and I asked him please get me a job. And he's like, if you want a job, you need experience. I'm like, how a 16 year old can have experience or a 17 year old can have experience? He's like, it's okay, just tell them you have experience. So I, um, I go to, I start to work. I remember my first day at work and I see like a line of employees. Each one have like a box of vegetables and they have to chop. And the chef come to me and he's like, okay, let's, uh, let's chop this box of uh, peppers. And I see, I hear the sound, you know, when chefs chopping, it's like, tuck, 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 tuck. and I, I take the pepper and I, I say, you know, if I don't know how to chop, at least I'm going to make the sound. And I start moving the same way. And, uh, and then the chef look at me and he's like, look, I'm going to teach you something. First do it right and then do it fast. So this is, this is the message that I always take in my entire career. And this is the first message I get on my first job in my life. And everything we do, and I always do that, like we just have this uh, chocolate, uh, chocolate explosion that we do, and I, you guys can show it, um, that we pour hot chocolate on top and it's all melting, like the, the, the hot chocolate melt with the hot chocolate on top of, the, of, on top of that. And I remember the first time I did it, we have a hard time to do it. So I say, let's do it for small events. And from these small events, we start doing that slowly, slowly, we learn how to do it fast and better. So that's really the message I can share with all the views you have um, about everything you want to do, do it first, do it right, and then with time you're going to get the speed on. Not only, I understand, have you studied in Israel, but you've also been influenced by what you've seen and experienced uh, your personal self in other countries. Tell us about that. When I walk, I always like to be, to, I like to walk. I don't come to just do the hours and go home. So every time I got a job, I used to always finish my job and then I ask, what else can we do? And every time when I walk with good chefs, like with, with top chefs, they used to say, wow, you're gonna be my assistant. You're gonna walk next to me. And this is how I start. Since I was very, very young, I start managing kitchen for events. I used to send events of three, 400 people out and I was, the, I was managing the whole event because we, I got to a level that I literally took all the jobs away from the executive chef. Now all what he got to do is just overwatch. And then we build trust that I really know what I'm doing. And he start to say, you know, tonight we have two, three events. Who are we going to send there? I think Shaik is the right person to send there. So this is how, um, so this give me the, the the adrenaline to really continue doing the same way and not not just to do the job and go home to really go and i want to learn more i want to be there i want to see how they do that and how it's done and what's behind the scene so this is this is where i am i always like to uh to learn more and to come with new ideas and to do much more than what we just need to do you don't focus only on one style of cuisine but many different styles, I understand. French, Israeli, or whatever. Tell us more. Um, it's funny, sometimes people asking me, can you do this, can you do that? Um, you know, if you go back 20, 30, 40 years ago, it was much harder to really know and understand how to do so many things. But today, we have Google, we have uh, Instagram, we have so many different directions that we can learn. We have YouTube that we can watch how people making everything from A to Z. So when someone come to me with a challenge, so I would say the first time I would gonna have experience with one of the chefs that come from the same place. So I will hire them and work with them one-on-one -on -one to see really how they do that. But in the end of the day, it's the tradition. It's how they grow up, they're what tools they have to make the food and how they produce that. So I really, I really have, I really enjoy um, putting, uh, get a challenge to learn a new cuisine and even to travel to different country and to see how they, uh, how they do it, how they come, how, how they make everything. 
And then you see some countries, they don't have oven, they have more frying machines, so they do a lot of frying food. Some countries have no flowers, they have more corn flowers. Some countries have cilantro and tomato, some of them have basil. So this is more or less what's the cuisine around us. And some of them have a uh, very delicate food. They used to like to let the wife sitting at home and make all these little things. If you go to the uh, Asian cuisine or Chinese cuisine or Japanese, and then if, even if you go to the Middle Eastern, you see all the kibe and the cigars. They like when the woman do the work and make it so pretty and beautiful. So if you understand where it's coming from and you're gonna see the most uh, detailed work come from this country, they don't have much to do. So really the family making a very beautiful things. If you go to America, you're gonna get a nice piece of steak, put it on the grill with some good French fries, uh, you know, and maybe some barbecue or they have their own style because they don't have so much time to deal with so many little details. So I like to combine everything and put it all together. In your profession, you see people at their happiest moments, celebrating life events, weddings and so forth. On the other hand, you're also from Israel and you've seen the struggle Israel is constantly facing, trying to survive in a rough neighborhood. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I believe that in every situation, when the two people understand each other and they really, really open to listen to each other, they can get to agreement, a fair agreement. And I think slowly, slowly Israel getting there and a lot of voice being heard and people listen and Israel willing to listen to the other side too. So I think this is something beautiful. And I think with time, and I see that even in happy, in happy events and what we do, you take a couple, they never, you know, the, everyone comes from a different direction, but they willing to build this life together because they know there are two sides of the picture, to be in one picture together. They, they willing to build a house together. So I think everywhere around the world, it's the same thing. And you see that in history, when two countries got together and understand each other and agree, they can build up something. And when they not understand each other and they don't listen to each other, it's falling apart. So we all hope for the day that we all gonna be together in one world and be happy again. In peace. In peace. Thank you, Shaik. It's been a real pleasure. It's my pleasure too. I'm definitely looking forward. Anytime you want me here, I'm going to be here. We should do this again, definitely. Thank you, Shaike. My pleasure. Human age reversal. We may be there already. Human studies are now ready to begin to confirm meaningful reversal of pathological aging processes. These clinical trials aim to alter older humans so that they function as much younger individuals. Even modest success will result in a paradigm shift that will impart enormous societal benefits, such as sparing Medicare from insolvency. Life extension is not standing idle while 5,000 Americans die each day from age-related illnesses. Joining us are physician scientists who want to hurry up these technologies to keep people from aging to death. While Life Extension is pushing these projects forward, we need financial help to ensure these studies are carried through to fruition. You can support this research by making a tax-deductible donation to Life Extension Society. All donations will be used to fund age reversal research. Join us on this essential mission.